Good evening boys and girls, we're back again for another online super club and tonight we're going to meet Gordon and another one of his friends and maybe some new choruses or new songs that we can learn on our lessons today. Hope you enjoy. On to you Gordon. Hello everybody, this is my friend Porky the Pig. So, say hello Porky. Well, how's it going guys? <laughs> I'm sure it's going very well. How, how's it going for you? Not bad. It's not summer yet. Why, what's so bad about summer? Barbecue. And what's so bad about barbecue? Have you not heard of roast pig? Roast pig, yeah. Well, I suppose that uh, that's not so good for the pig. You're telling me. But nobody's going to eat you. You're a puppet. Oh, guess not. <laughs> hey, tell the boys and girls what it is that you do. I'm a bank. You're a bank, yeah. And is it fun being a bank? Yeah, except when folks ask for their money back. Why, what happens when people ask for their money back? They try and smash me. They smash you? Yeah. They think I'm a porcelain pig, but I'm not. They just have to ask. Two, we're going to consider the Olympics again and remember two lessons one about an event you'll find at the Olympics and the other about a symbol that's associated with the Olympics let's think about the event first of all and the event that we're going to think about today is archery basically yeah bow and arrow what's that got to do with the Bible well it's to do with the term because the term sin is associated with the sport of archery if you were to fire a perfect shot at the target, you'd want to get it right in the middle. And if you've got it right in the middle of the target, that's a perfect shot. If you miss perfect by this much, you've missed. If you miss perfect by this much, you've still missed perfect. Even if you miss it by this much, you've still missed perfect. And that's what the word sin means. It means to fall short of perfect. And the Bible says all of us have sinned, all of us have fallen short of God's standard because God's standard is absolutely perfect, sinless, pure and all of us have missed that standard, some by a big margin, some not by so much but all of us have sinned and that's bad news because nothing that defiles, nothing bad can enter into heaven that's why we need God's forgiveness, even one sin is enough to bring us under the condemnation and the punishment of God. 
There is, of course, one person who never sinned, and that's the Lord Jesus. The Bible says about him that he did no sin, that he knew no sin, that in him is no sin. And it says, he who knew no sin bore our sins on his own body on that tree. It's interesting that in most targets, the center is called a bullseye, but in archery, the perfect shot is when you hit the cross. And the Lord Jesus, who is perfect, he went to that cross to make us perfect by taking our punishment to make us right with God again. So that's what we learn from archery. What is this? What I have here is I have some cards, and as you can see, I have missed the mark. I have sinned. The bullseye is right in the middle of the target, and I've missed with my shot. Let's take these cards and put them out on the table. Let's take the first one, put it down there. Second one, just put it below it. Next one, down on the table, and the next one, just put it below it. Last one, down on the table and put it below it. I do have one perfect card. You can see that it's right in the middle. Now I thought, wonder if I could take this perfect card and make the imperfect ones perfect. The sin ones, the ones that have missed the mark, perfect. Let's take it one at a time. We'll put that one underneath there and we'll give it a little turn and see. Yep, it's now in the middle of the target. Perfect. Let's try this one. Yep, it's now in the middle of the target as well. Last one, take our perfect card, give it a turn, and is it? Yeah, it's now perfect as well. The same as our original perfect card. Let's take the three, four perfect ones, and the three imperfect ones, the ones that I've now sinned, Give it a little turn like that. Put the sinned ones, the ones that have missed the mark there, the perfect ones, the ones that have been made perfect there, and take our original perfect one. And let's see if we can't do three at the same time. So let's take that, put it under there, under there, and under there, and give it a little twist, and let's just see if we can make them perfect. One perfect. Two perfect. 
three perfect and an original perfect card. Now, seven perfect cards. It's a bit like the Lord Jesus. He's the one who's perfect who did no sin. We've all missed, we've all sinned, but the Lord Jesus died on that cross so that we could be made perfect in God's sight. Remember that means to be bought back, to be rescued from being slaves. We were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with something infinitely more precious, the blood of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we've been thinking about today. We've been thinking about how, well, we've sinned, we've fallen short of perfect, but He didn't. He's God's sinless Son, and He paid the price for us on that cross with His own blood. Says the Bible, He died for us. He died for our sins. He died the just for us, the unjust, to bring us back to God. He's our Redeemer, the one who paid the price to rescue us.
The Olympic symbol I want us to think about today are the Olympic rings. Five of them all together. There is blue, yellow, black, green and red. And they all link together. They've been a part of the Olympics since 1913. And when they were brought in, they were intended to represent the five continents. That is Europe, Asia, Africa, the Americas and Oceania. And they were supposed to symbolise unity with all these continents linked together and competing together in the Olympics. But I want to think about the circle. It's very difficult to get across the idea of something that is eternal. And the Bible says God is eternal. You see, something that is eternal has no beginning and no end. And that's difficult for our minds to take in because pretty much everything we know has had a beginning and will have an end. But a circle, a circle helps us think about that which is eternal. Let me just get my circle just now. I know it doesn't look very much like a circle just yet. In fact, it looks a little bit square. But if I give it a little pull like this, it soon becomes a circle. And the thing about a circle is, it doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. It just continues and continues. And the Bible says that God is eternal, that he has always been, that he's never had a beginning and he will always be, that he's never had an end. The Lord Jesus said about himself that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one which was and is and is to come, the Almighty One. So you see, God is eternal. And God wants to give a gift of eternal life to those who trust Jesus Christ as our Saviour. Now, eternity is a long time. It basically does not have an end. And the Bible says we can either spend that eternity separated from God with still our sins unforgiven, undealt with, or we can have our sins forgiven, come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, and be accepted by God and have eternity in his heaven. So, Eternity is a long time. It is without end. So we need to make sure that we are ready to meet God for that long eternity. And the way to do that is by accepting that Christ died for our sins, being made right with God, and then we can look forward to that eternity. I could sail a boat or hold my breath and float an iceberg full of Eskimos I could ride a bike or flap my arms and fly to the tallest mountain in the sky There's a hundred ways to almost any place But Jesus is the only way The only way Hey, hey, hey The only way to heaven Jesus is the only way
Thank you so much for joining with us for our Tuesday night online super club. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I have, and I hope you have too. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night for Wednesday's online super club. See you then. Bye.